problem. Thank you. Thank you both. Honestly, thank you both for doing this. I really do appreciate it. Um, Natasha, Valerie, uh, Carmen is a, just, it's a joy. The film is a joy. I really do. Uh, I really think it's a wonderful piece. Uh, Valerie, maybe we can talk a little bit about from you. What, what was the inspiration uh, behind the film? Back in uh, 2013, uh, well, I'm Maltese, born in Malta, raised in Toronto, uh, and in, I have a ton of relatives there. In 2013, I went there with my son um, to do some research for some other project and also just, you know, to introduce my son to my family. And my cousin Tonino took me to visit my aunt Rita, who's at a home in Rabat. And um, I never really knew Rita's gig, you know, she dressed in black um, and just was extremely pious, but she wasn't a nun. And Tonino explained to me that there used to be a tra tradition where when a man became a priest, which happened quite regularly in Malta, one per family maybe, um, uh, his sister would go with him and be his maid and that would be her life. And she wouldn't get an education a salary or have a family of her own. And my Aunt Rita did that for my great uncle, uh, Monsignor, and my uncle, Dun Paul, which is a priest. Um, she did that till they died. And then she went, and she was 13 when she did it, actually, at the age of 13. So they died, and then she was taken in with the family, and now she's in her 90s, like 95, I believe and in this home. Yeah, so I went to uh, visit her February 2020 and um, my other cousin told her that you know, I made this film about that. And she just burst into tears and said that her life was terrible. And I asked her at one point um, if she had a picture of herself and she said, nobody wanted to take a picture of me. So, this is in honor of my Aunt Rita and any woman that's been forced to do something they didn't want to do. Absolutely. It's, it's I mean, it's, it's a wonderful portrait of her. And as I, you know, I've said to you, I, I didn't realize it was inspired by, I knew it was based on true events. I didn't know it was, it was so personal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then when, when I came back from that trip, um, I spoke to you know my, my friends and one friend from Ireland who, who said that that happened to her aunt and then another friend in India she said there's a similar story there where um, the and this happens in many places as well as Malta where the eldest daughter has to stay back and take care of the parents. Mm. Wow! Well, wow! Well, yeah. Yeah! 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 It's always the woman, right? It's always the Anyway, so that's that's um, so I took that tradition and wrote Carmen, and and it's a sort of a what if, what if Aunt Rita broke free, you know? It's that. such a it's such a wonderful portrait. It, it truly is. And, and Natasha, you're wonderful in the film. I, as I've said to you before, I love your work. Um, in, in for you, in your case, I'm wondering. Uh, what is it that you feel that that Carmen is or is not looking for in the film? Um, I think she probably doesn't realize that she's looking for anything until the death of her brother. Mm. I think the scales kind of, you know, as often happens in anyone's life, but I think particularly hers, until you're pushed up against the wall and your circumstances change and you have to make a huge pivot and sort of accommodation for new sets because she's been in this habit of her routine um you know for decades at this point so i think it would take quite a lot to shake her out of that but in, in a sense you know the death of her brother is 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 her own kind of birth isn't it or or rebirth you know second yeah. chance at life um and um, so it's only then that I suppose no one wants her. She doesn't have any family. She literally doesn't have anywhere to go. She's got to start inventing herself and creating an identity. And, and she, as you see, you know, she tries all sorts of different things. Um, some don't fit <laughs> and then, and some do. And um, what's lovely is she comes back to a version, I suppose, of 
we spoke about this before a little bit about spirituality, but a, a version of faith, of belief, of signs and wonders that suit her, that aren't institutionalized and are not patriarchal and are not imposed, but they're things that come from within her through, you know, the experiences that she's just been having in those, in those what's probably just a few months. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, she, you know, I'd say there's some extreme, you know, her life is at risk at the beginning of, of that part of the story that she doesn't have the means to live, to eat, to a roof over her head. So, you know, that, that pushes you into interesting places. Um, sorry, I'm cooking and, and I know you know why. <laughs> I don't want that to be any lack of reverence for this interview because... <laughs> Um, I have only reverence. <laughs> I'm just, uh, yeah, <laughs> my schedule is, is caught up with me. Um, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I love that you said that. And by the way, cooking is life-giving. So that, that's a good thing. <laughs> Works perfectly well. Um, one of the things, I, you touched on something there, and I love this aspect of the film. Like, it truly, it truly is something that we don't often see is this idea that a film about the church, but there's a separation between church and, and God and, and faith um, within the film. I'm just wondering, um, you know, uh, uh, Valerie and, and Natasha, why you feel that was such an important aspect of the story. Right. Um, yeah, there is a, a big separation. Uh, and I think I might've done that more subconsciously than consciously, but uh, between, church and spirituality. I, I, I feel like that word gets so overused and I hate, I, I feel like I'm pretentious when I use it, but I can't find that other word other than maybe awe and wonderment, but um, there is a separation. I grew up extreme in an extremely uh, Catholic home uh, as you, I have lots of nuns and priests in my family and even one priest en route to being canonized. But um, so, I grew up thinking that anyone who wasn't Catholic was wrong, right? Uh, and that's all I knew until I was uh, maybe 15 or so and read deeper into the Bible or whatever was given to us and um, realized that God didn't like everybody. He didn't like homosexuals. Like, what is this about? What, where's, uh, I thought it was love love everyone, you know. Um, so I went to the extreme opposite direction, like really opposite from the church, but it, it, it's in you, right? It, 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 your religion is there. You can't really escape it. Uh, it took many years, many, many years for me to um, feel mm, at peace as to what realizing that I could separate the church with the religion from the religion. And I think that just came naturally in the writing of Carmen. Mm. You know, what is it to be, um, <laughs> okay, spiritual. Uh, what is it to be spiritual <laughs> or, to avoid the word. Or, <laughs> or to, to be, uh, and what is, what is, what is it? Well, who is God, and what 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 is God, and and what's Jesus got to do with it, and um, and who is He, and and I'm still questioning. I'm always questioning and looking for God, you know. And I don't. It's not like I think there is a God. I think I mean there is a there is something beyond us, and it's in the universe. And and I strive for kindness and. Um, I, and love and peace and I'm sorry if I sound like a hippie but that's what I do and and I think that is that's the religion I'd like to follow um where everyone has a an equal voice uh yes did I answer your question yes yes okay. absolutely but but don't hate on the hippies they had a lot of things wrong. Ah, no, I didn't <laughs> No, I just don't want to sound, you know, hooga booga ish. But if that is that in the, I think it's in the dictionary. I think. I, I think hooga booga is a is a legitimate, you know, <laughs> noun to be used. Okay. Um, yeah, and and I think Carmen, I of course, you know, you know, Carmen, because I I wrote Carmen, and I, I 
she, I, I'm going to say that Carmen is, does the same. Mm. You know, it's like, why have you forsaken me? Which mm. Jesus says on the cross before he um, dies. <laughs> and, and then, um, or so the Bible told me so. But um, she feels the same. It's like, what is this? I've sacrificed 35 years of my life and this is it? Mm. Your doors aren't even open for me? Um, there's and in that bit in the film for those who have seen it. <laughs> anyway, uh, and so and it, I feel Carmen um, is is a lot of my there's a lot of that as well a lot of me a lot of my questions um, and um, she too strives for kindness. Absolutely. Um, well, I mean, for you both, for you both too. Um, one of the things that I love, because I love the portrayal of, of, you know, you talk about this, this connection with, with faith or God outside the church, because he's in, inside the church, he's very, very dark and heavy. And there's a, uh, you know, before I was saying to you, there's a dryness to the, to the film that begins to gradually uh, flesh out, but outside he's, he's kind of sassy. I kind of, I, I love that. And it is fun. And, and, you know, uh, there's a picture of, of Jesus riding a bicycle and he's, you know, got his crown of thorns and he's just driving down the city streets. And I, I just, uh, as we, I know we're starting to run out of time, but yeah. Do you think that there's a, an aspect of threat to joy? Because it seems like all the joy is outside the building in this film. Um, Yes, I do think uh, joy can threaten power, the powerful people out there, um, because, well, joy is contagious. Mm. And so, you know, you, you get 10 and then 20 and then so on and so on. And then that might be to the powers at hand uh, out of control. And when you can't control your community that can be frightening. So joy can be threatening. Um, because of, of that you know, lack of control. Yeah. The, there's something that I remember you telling me, Valerie, um, that might pertain to, to this to this question. I, I love that observation that things became joyous or, you know, the colours you know the saturation all of those sorts of things change once we got outside yeah and she sort of starts to have her awakening um and I also feel you know that's a lovely description I suppose um that god godliness signs wonders the things that we can't really name um that we try to name because we can't name them um exist outside in in nature and in, in in the sort of lattice work of this thing that we're still trying to figure out you know whether it's mycelial networks underground or, or um you know cloud patterns in the sky or you know astrology um astro navigation whatever it is and i remember you saying something interesting about rita was that she you know malta is a tiny island and it's surrounded obviously by sea and it's renowned for its ships for its you know the, the naval base, the, the, all, all of the stories of of sea related. Um, yeah. Um, it, it, sorry, I'm, sh I'm just on the phone. Um, sorry, um, <laughs> this is a real life podcast. Um, and um, um, you saying that she'd never been to the beach? Yeah, she told me that she'd never been to the beach. Wow. And doesn't that just say everything? Yeah. You have the to beach imagine. is no further than 20 minutes from any, oh, well, actually less than that, isn't it? Less 10 minutes than that, yeah. From any yeah. spot in Malta, and yet she'd never been. That, to me, just shows the level of enslavement or sort of oppression or, you know, the roof over her head literally sort of pushing her down. And, yeah. and I feel that you really capture that in Carmen, just um, getting her straight to the sea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks for reminding me about that, uh, Natasha. It's it's uh, it's true, and yeah, that's um, what we did. We got her to the sea. Um, mm. Carmen, I mean, not uh, not my aunt Rita. 
Yeah. And actually, I noticed within the film, and I know we, we have to wrap it up, but um, there's very little water at the beginning of the film. I think the only water is holy water. I think she yeah. splashes herself with holy water. And by the end, she's at the beach. It's yeah. just there's so much. It, it's, uh, it was beautiful. The film is beautiful from top oh. to finish. I absolutely loved it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, that's thank so you. nice to hear. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you both so much for the time. I really do appreciate it. Uh, it's a joy to chat with you, and I, I'm so thankful. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. Lovely to chat. Lovely Bye, you. guys. Bye. Bye.